I'm keeping my distance I've got my gun drawn If he comes any closer I won't shoot to warn Very merry solstice And a shitty new year I didn't get that far with the lyrics. Hello, I am Dane Cobain, the author of Black Solstice. I believe it's the final story in the uh, Served Cold collection. And that was one of the uh, chapter headings. It's basically a story about uh, an evil Santa Claus. You don't want this guy coming down your chimney. And uh, each of the sections is preceded by uh, a little bit of a Christmassy song uh, with lyrics such as, does he ride a red-nosed hellhound? Are there weapons on his sleigh? And, uh, of course, the, uh, the classic song, a uh, poem, rather, by Clement Van Helsing. "'Twas the night before solstice, when all through the shack not a creature was stirring, not even a bat." And, um, basically Santa's a vampire, and instead of wanting him to come down your chimney to deliver some presents, you don't want him to come down your chimney, because he's going to take away your children and do vampire things to them. So Murs asked me to, uh, do a little video where I talked a little bit about it. Um, I guess we'll do a little bit of a reading. Uh, there's a lot of lore. So, um, yeah, let's do a little bit of a reading. Hope you enjoy. The house smelled like garlic. A silver chalice sat on a silver tray on a table in the kitchen. It was filled with a clear liquid, holy water from the healing springs of Lords, and two communion wafers sat on a silver plate beside them. A wooden crucifix lay between the two of them. It was midnight on the morning of December 21st. The house was one of several dozen that were nestled beneath the blanket of snow over Greyfriars Close and the rest of Mile End. Upstairs in their bedroom, the Reed family slumbered on. John Reed was fast asleep, his moustache net holding his precious curls out of his nose and mouth. Mildred, his wife, was asleep beside him, though she was twitching. In the other bedroom, the twins were still awake, and they were terrified. Jesse and Jude were seven years old, and they were just about old enough to still believe in Satan Claus. Some of the children at school had said that Satan was made up by capitalists to sell more products, but Jesse and Jude kept themselves to themselves and didn't give a hoot what the other kids said. Perhaps Satan Claus was just their father in a silly suit, but then again, perhaps not. And they didn't want to take the risk and then find out that they were wrong. John Reed had told them that they were taking Pascal up on his wager. They hadn't known what he'd meant at the time, but then they'd asked Mr. Griffin at the school and he told them all about it. It made a lot of sense after that. Perhaps Satan Claus didn't exist, but then again, perhaps he did. If they took the right precautions and he did exist, they had a shot at surviving. If he didn't, well, they'd just look a little silly. And Jesse and Jude didn't care if they looked silly, as long as they survived. And so they'd stayed up late on Solstice Eve, roaming around the house and performing the final touches, scattering salt circles around their beds and polishing all of the mirrors. A couple of weeks earlier, they'd found some sticks while they were walking by the river, and they'd spent the days between sharpening the sticks with their daddy's penknife. Luckily for them, he hadn't caught them. They'd hung a silver horseshoe above their bedroom door, polished every shiny surface until they could see their faces, and placed mirrors by the doors and windows. In the back garden, tear-shaped nazars hung from trees, channeling the old magic to protect the house from the glare of the evil eye. The house was festooned with images of Christ, and they'd woven St. Bridget's crosses out of rush to hang in each of the rooms. In their bedroom, a homemade dream catcher made of yarn hung above their bunk bed, occasionally bopping Jude on the head if she sat up in the night. Blown glass witch balls hung in every room, and so did bunches of wildflowers, including branches of ash, oak, wild rose, white heather and hawthorn. Jessie had even asked her daddy to bring her some clippings from the aspen tree at the bottom of the garden. Does it have to be aspen? he'd asked. Of course, she'd replied matter-of-factly. That's the same kind of tree they used to make Jesus' cross, daddy. They'd scattered mustard seeds on the floors and even convinced their parents to leave the taps on, thanks to the old story that vampires couldn't cross running water. They'd also asked their mother if they could hang some mistletoe, but she'd refused. Mistletoe is a patriarchal tradition designed to apply social pressure to young women until they agree to kiss old men, she'd insisted. I mean, the juice in the berries represents jizz, for goodness sake. What's jizz, mummy? Never you mind. But the girls were hopeful that they'd be able to wear her down eventually, just like they'd done with the gun and the silver bullets. The two girls had been making zero headway until they'd presented their mother with a series of charts and graphs that showed the prevalence of home invasions. She'd relented after that, and she'd been their key weapon when it came to convincing their father. John Reed would have done anything for his daughters, and so he'd purchased an illegal firearm from a guy called Silky at the local boozer. He kept the gun and the holy bullets inside a shoebox in the drawer of his bedside table. That afternoon, Mildred cut her hand while helping her daughters to bake communion wafers. 
She tried to hide it from them, to cover the wound with a plaster before they noticed, but the twins' eyes were as sharp as their intellects, and before she'd even removed the first aid kit from the kitchen cupboards, they told her what she needed to do. You did an oopsie, mummy, Jude said. You know the rules. And she did know the rules too. It said that any wound left untreated with boiling water was enough to let the evil in, and so the traditionalists poured boiling water over graves during funerals. In the Reed household, it meant that she had to pop the kettle on and take a couple of aspirin. That night she was sleeping with a bandage around her hand. Beware of Satan Claus, for he is coming for you. Serve cold. Read it.